three different levels of it. You can call in about the dust up. You can call in about the little bro thing, or you can call in about actual football. We've tried to lay it all out for you. You guys take it where you want to go. Uh, Bobby, ticket text. Kenny, David, both sick or extended weekend. We'll find out tomorrow. Bobby, what do you got for everybody? We got Mike hit the nail on the head, but I think Jonathan Smith needs to go out and prove this weekend we got the right guy and beat Signetti. I got to, I don't know. I feel like the way State's playing right now, fellas, they moved the ball on the ground against Iowa. They moved it really well against Michigan. All right, if you can do that, you should be able to move the ball against IU. Time of possession, they had 37 minutes of it against Michigan. I think you'll see a very similar game plan. And it's either the backup, who you have tape on, mm-hmm. or Curtis Rourke off thumb surgery. Mm-hmm. I do think this weekend's a, a I don't want to overstate it, but it's an important game. It would be a really nice credibility bounce back if he's able to get that locker room to rally up and have a big home ranked win and 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 really open that window to seven or eight wins. I wish I felt that confident as you I do. I didn't say confident. Wait a minute. <laughs> I just said I don't think it's going to be 50 to seven. No, here's the problem. It's the empty calories offense. It's moving the ball, but then ending up – as, as soon as you cross into the red zone, you might as well just send Jonathan Kim out there to kick the field goal. Noted. Because you're not going to score a touchdown. You don't score touchdowns. Against Iowa, he kicked seven field goals and made six of them. That should probably lose you a game, except for Iowa can't score. All right, just, just breathe. Just breathe. Go ahead, Bobby. Indiana scores points. I am aware. <laughs> Bobby Reed, something I can't take anymore. <laughs> okay. Says the real crime in the game was Jonathan Smith not calling a timeout on that first drive on fourth and goal and taking a delay penalty instead of setting up a scoring play. Agreed. Malpractice. Terrible job by him. Next up, state fan. Loveland's comment just felt unnecessarily forced. Didn't bother me. It's just them continuing to act like they don't care about playing us. We all see the reality. Well, I just think, again, this probably wasn't the year to drop that one-liner, but you know what? They won the game. I'm not going to go bat bleep crazy over it. Spartan fans, here's the deal. If you don't want to hear it, win the game. That's the only out you have in this deal. So, Because it ain't going away. No, and it's it doesn't matter. I mean, we kicked their teeth in for a decade. The minute they rose up out of their their, their mud hole, that was the first thing they had to say. So but you like, know what? Right. But here's the thing. Maybe, maybe that needed to happen for Jonathan Smith to understand everything. He said it in right. his That's comments. It. So, in in hindsight, I mean, if you look back at it, yeah, it sucked when, when they lost that game and Mike Hart came out and said that, but I think any Spartan fan would take the deal. It means you're going to beat them the next four straight years and seven of the next eight years. But he's going to embarrass you with that comment. Will you take that? Yes. Yes. 100%. I just, again, it's not 2007. The comment doesn't resonate. It's different. Everything's different. So for me, it's like, okay. Say it. I don't. It, what difference does it make? It doesn't make any. It doesn't. I, I, maybe if he says it before the game. I'd have more respect for it. I'd have or a if he had to go take the field again, I would yeah. go, okay, listen, be careful now. Yeah, well, other, other than the trophy, they weren't playing for anything in this game. So it wasn't big enough to, to be called little brother, big brother type of game. Yeah, that's so why, listen, Bobby, all I tell you is, my man, when each team's got three losses, I don't know if that's the year I want anyone to say anything. That'd be the yeah. it, that'd be the equal of like MSU trying to plant a flag. Right. Like guys, guys, at that point, away. yeah, you're you're just both poor brothers, each fighting over half a sandwich. Go to the locker room and have a peanut butter and jelly and call it a <laughs> right. day. Go ahead, Bobby. Sparty fan that was at the game. It was the most passionless atmosphere I felt in a long time. Didn't feel like a rivalry game. Game plan was too conservative, and no need to save any plays for future games. No, it was it was very. Look, it was hard to watch. Who are we kidding? I was texting with TJ Saturday night, and TJ, who was probably 15 beers deep, couldn't even find it in his soul to be smarmy. He's like, Mike, I'm not even being a bleep. I'm not going to say the word. Both these teams are terrible. I go, well, TJ, I'd like to be the terrible one who wins it, but yes, this is not a good watch. Well, and that's why you, you got to score on that first drive because the fan, the fans in, in the – at, at the big house, they were they were tapped out. The players, Michigan players, were they were just like, man, how bad is this? At one point, I think State had like n- almost a hundred rushing yards to Michigan's one. They weren't happy, but then all like right before the halftime, the energy came into the building, and then that's when they had the light show and all the other stuff started happening. 
Yeah, listen. I, they Mich- were ready to quit. I thought Michigan played a smarter game. Best thing I could say. Played a smarter game. Yeah. And for State, you're just not in a position you can give points away. You get you gave six away, minimum. Yeah, I don't think that that plan is sustainable, but it was sustainable enough on Saturday. For yeah, look, I, I've asked the question. It's just Michigan fans feel tapped out on their own team. I've said, look, this is the 2QB system. You brought it up. If you play this way, it gives you the best chance for success. Now, my concern for Michigan would be the ground game, it's not good enough to to execute the plan you're trying to execute. Meaning, look, you can't get outrushed by Michigan State and by 50. You, it can't happen. You're going to go play Oregon this week. You need to possess this football 36, 37, 38 minutes. You need to do what State did to you. The problem is there's something wrong with that offensive line. They are not generating. Forget explosive. They're just not generating anything on the ground. Mike, it's not. And I think that Jed Fish, Washington coach, actually exposed it where he – I don't think you're going to pass the ball. I'm going to just clog up the offensive line. I'm going to flood it with players. We're going to gang tackle your runners. You got to beat us by throwing the ball. And they couldn't. But here's the thing for Michigan, and this is what my fear would be. State didn't have the ability to pressure Davis Warren. We just don't. We have one sack and five big things. Oregon does. Ohio State does-ish. When they feel like it. I don't love their D-line. Yeah, Um, but you know what? They'll get up for that Michigan game. If you can pressure Warren, he'll make mistakes. If you don't, he can be a perfect game manager. He can go 14 for 18 or 14 for 19, give you a buck 20. We'll bring Orgy in to supplement it. We'll run a few trick plays. The, the, The pathway is there. But they got to adhere to it. And, yes, does it help when you don't have a single penalty called in? Of course it does. Yeah. Not the reason you won the game. I'm just saying. Things that make you go, hmm. No, it just helps. It just helps. Any team. Christ, if the I've Giants that. if the Giants go out tonight <laughs> and don't get called for a single penalty, we got a decent shot to beat the Steelers. Buddy, I watched two touchdowns last night with the Niners get called back because of a penalty. You hate to see it. Yeah. Look, you won the game. What do you want? You won the game. All right. All right, I had to watch Aaron Boone put Nestor Cortez in a game he hadn't pitched in 37 days, and Freddie Freeman hit a ball to Palo Alto. You just sit there and enjoy your win. Did you hear that he limped up to the plate? By the way, did you know it was National Tight Ends Day? (laughs) When they put that stupid title belt that looked like a kid's construction paper project that they were bringing to third grade. Yeah, they went straight to Michael's and picked that one up. That's the WWE belt from Walmart. Yeah. yeah, They were like, yeah, we really blew the budget out. I'm like, God almighty, why does everything have to be a bit? That's the other thing with these games, and I'll say it for Michigan, Michigan State, these commercials. The fact that it's election season only makes it worse. Oh, my God. Jenny, Jenny, they come back for one snap, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. Carl Marlinga. And I'm like, okay, mute. Okay, I'm not doing this. And then they ran, They came back one time, and it was three plays, and we're going to commercial. I, I'm like, mute, 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 well, mute. You know what? Could have been worse. You could have been watching the light show and turn your lights on. But there's four hours. These games, all of them, pro, college, they're four hours. Because they know you're not going anywhere. I just, but it, come on, man. One play and then a commercial. Or, hey, we'll uh, time out on the field. We'll be back in 15 seconds. No, it's score, commercial, extra point, commercial, commercial kickoff, it's, commercial. It's unbelievable. 2485399797. I said, we will get to the people. We got to do Can We Say That? We are going to mix in the Lions in the three o'clock hour as well because yesterday proved something I've never been more certain of. We'll get to that in the three o'clock hour.